Hello everybody and welcome back. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to be trying to film my entire day's worth of work to see if that makes an interesting video. I don't know whether it will. So what are we going to be doing in today's video? First, I'm going to pick some of my orders and show you what has sold over the last day. And then I'm going to pack them up and do the labels. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that's going to be on camera, but we're going to do it anyway. And then I have to take the journey over to the drop-off location. But interestingly enough, we actually have a pickup to do from the drop-off location as well, because I bought some stuff over on Vinted. So that will be coming as well, which has already been dropped off there. So we'll pick that up and uh, come back and take a look at it to see if it's any good, because it was actually... And electronic, it's not clothing this time, so hopefully, fingers crossed, they've not just put it in a black bin bag and shipped it, because if they have, then it's likely to be broken, which is not a good thing. So, yeah, but before we start, I want to show you a little bit of the changes in here, because my last video was one showing you uh, my storage, and I said I wanted to get some sort of... Um, bookshelf that I could put all the books in because they were down here in this little tub um, and I also wanted to get rid of the shoes in the tub that was down here as well so when I turn you around I'm going to show you what I have managed to do it's not fantastic it's not perfect you just it's temporary until I can get something better but for now it's actually working out pretty well and one thing I have noticed in the last couple of weeks is this unit here is leaning so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that it only seems to be the top half I'm not sure why it's doing it so at some point I will have to um, take all the stuff off and have a little look to see why it's leaning forward but for now I've temporarily taped it to the other one I don't know if that's gonna work but yes here is the I guess you could call it bookshelf but I've kind of mangled it because you know half the shelves aren't on there anymore but yeah down the bottom here we've got all of our books so about two and a half of the shelves are taken up by the books. This can obviously be changed at any point if I need to add or remove shelves because it's all just done by pins. Uh, I've got a few records here which are separated from my other records because they're completely different. Uh, some spare cases which are currently empty. They're just there temporarily. And some other random bits here uh, just for now. Uh, but on top, uh, we've actually managed to stack all of my shoes. So... Uh, this may look like a mess, but this is a thousand times easier when a shoe sells because I can see it straight away and grab it uh, in the pair because previously they're all muddled up in that big tub. I'd have to pull them all out to find the one that's like at the bottom of the tub. And it was just really, really frustrating and quite annoying, to be honest. So I'm really thankful that I managed to uh, pick up these two units and they actually were free so that was pretty good um one of them's you know like hidden behind this unit here a little bit uh so it's not that useful but i can put some stuff there if i need to so i'm going to set up this camera i don't know how well you can see me from there because it's hard to tell with the gopro because i don't have a screen on the front but yeah this unit here is actually leaning a little bit and it's quite concerning i don't know whether it happened after i pushed this shelving unit in here or what's gone on but yeah this top here is supposed to be back like that but it's not and now it's actually been pushed off its rafter that's not good oh crud right we're gonna go over a few of my cells uh probably some of the better ones and i'll do the other ones off camera because i do have 16 and this video is going to be rather long, should I do all of them on camera. Uh, there is also some DVDs down here which aren't listed and they're just going to get thrown away, but they're currently in my way. Right, first up we're going to go with the vintage hand-painted Russian nesting dolls, which I believe are around here. So this here is a set of... I'm hoping that light's not too much in frame... This here is a set of, I think, eight, no, ten nesting dolls from Russia. It's handmade. You can see on the bottom there that the person who made it has painted all of their, you know, markings and stuff on here. So this opens ten times. Uh, I originally had this listed for like 150, I think. Uh, but it was just sat there and no one was taking any notice of it. So I recently dropped it down to 100 and someone has actually picked it up. 
Uh, this sold last night, which was a really nice one uh, towards the end of the day. So yeah, £100, £99.99 it went for, uh, plus £5 postage. So that is going to have to be like, I don't know, I'm going to have to open it and make sure it's not all rattling around in there maybe. Yeah, and then uh, wrap that up nice, put it in a box, and that will be that. Right, we have sold a three set of Skylanders games for the Wii with no figures or anything, just the three games, and it is these ones here. And that one has gone for $9.99, so that's a nice, easy sell. Unfortunately, I had my old postage rate on there, so I've lost a little bit on postage, but that is okay because I'm happy to see them finally leave uh, the eBay storage because, you know, it's nice when games go out. My pile gets less. And I can buy more. Right, next up we've sold a puzzle. I've got to find it. It's some sort of donkey. Uh, so, yeah, it should be on this shelf somewhere. So this is a 600-piece puzzle. Rather weird number. It's normally 500 uh, or 550 or something. But, yeah, this is a 600. Uh, it's all in German, so I can't really uh, understand what it says. But I think it is uh, something scene, rural scene, um, something along them lines. Made in West Germany, so... Yeah, back up when the wall was there, um, which is rather interesting. Um, so I think the wall came down in like the 80s or something, right? So it must be pre-1980 something or other. Or was it 90? Was it like 97 or something? I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Foster's Pint Glass. We sold another two Foster's Pint Glasses for 850. They're actually in the packing room already because that's where I store... Uh, one of each set of the glasses for easy picking. Um, so yes, that is over there. So we'll put a picture here. There's just a standard tool glasses times by two, £8.50 plus postage on that. And we have sold a pair of uh, roller skates. I've had these for a while and they've finally gone. I think they're over here. Yep, here they are. So here we go. This is a pair of uh, children's roller skates i picked these up for like two pounds or something at a car boot so had them up for 15 for a long time during the summer uh, and they just didn't sell unfortunately so i have recently dropped them down to about 12 pounds just to clear them with five pound postage because they are quite heavy uh, and that has finally sold so we didn't make too much money on this maybe around the seven pound mark after fees and all of the vats and stuff like that um, maybe seven's a little bit generous, actually. It might probably be around six pounds something. Uh, without working out fully, I don't know exactly, but that is a nice one to clear out of the unit. Next up, we have a nice interesting jacket. This here is a vintage Kappa blue zip-up jacket. It's really nice. It's really thick. Uh, but story with this, I actually bought this from Vinted. I've actually been buying a lot of stock from Vinted uh, because the prices are just nuts, like crazy cheap nuts. Uh, and you can get some really good stuff from Vinted currently because, you know, it's marketed as list for free, no fees, like all these new people are jumping on the platform that need a little bit of money and they're throwing their stuff up so cheap without checking what they're worth <clears throat> so this was listed for eight pounds the reason why i bought this was because this was actually a jacket that was given to a track member on the usa track and field national team back in the day when kappa sponsored them so as you'll see from this uh logo here um yeah official sponsor of the track and field national team which is really cool because this means that uh, one of the team members would have had this. So this has made it over from the USA somehow in all of the years that it's been in existence. And uh, I ended up with it for £8. And that was including postage as well. So it was £8 to my door. Actually, it was to the drop-off shop. But yeah, and uh, I got £35. So if you minus £8 from 35 what's that? 28 uh, 27 Yeah. Yeah, 27 yeah, £27, and then obviously you have to take fees off, so you've got £3.50 P, uh, £3 fees, roughly, uh, so you've got to take another £3.50, £4 off that, 
Uh, so you got like £22 profit before taxes. Um, so I'm quite happy with that one. It was a nice easy turnaround um, for £8 and uh, I knew it would sell. So I could have sat on that and it would have gone for 50 at some point. But I wanted to get my money out and uh, reinvest it. So yes, next up we have another puzzle. Uh, £9.99 we got for this nice little puzzle. Uh, two scenes. I've actually been here. Uh, yeah. I have a photo of me and my family standing up on the hill further up over here. But yeah, this is a really nice uh, little... You go, like, put your feet in the water down the end there. I don't know where it is. Wales, Devon, something like that. I don't know. I don't know, but we got £10 plus postage on that. Oh, next up we have sold another of the Eddie Stobart truck. So this one is the white one. This Eddie Stobart truck here with the dude playing rugby on the side. I think it's Hull FC, I think. Hull FC, something like that. Uh, and that one has gone for £9 plus postage. Okay. Oh, that figure that's been sat here forever, never sold, that I finally moved, uh, has sold. I think I put it in here. So this is the Ironwind Battletech uh, from some game or movie or anime or something. I don't know what it's from. Uh, but yes, I've had this sat on top of my games um, for absolutely ever. And he never sold, never had any interest. So I got a bit fed up with him and I thought, you know what? You can just go in the tub with everyone else. You're nothing special. Go in there, see what happens. As soon as I do that, he sells. <laughs> He's sold. Right, next up we have an action man with spiky hair. So all them people that tell you that action men don't sell. I've been selling my action men between 8 and £15. Pounds, and uh, these are only ones that are from like the 90s uh, to early 2000s. These aren't even the old 80s ones. I think there's ones from the 80s which sell much better. Uh, but yeah, this one has gone for £7 plus £3.50 postage. Uh, he came in a massive bundle of action men that I got. Uh, there was about 15 action men. There was two massive like action men crates which sold, covering the entire cost. Um, so all of these little dudes that sell are just pure profit now. Obviously minus in fees and whatnot. But yeah, very happy that he has gone out. He is not the first and he will not be the last one to sell. Uh, but yes, here we go. This is a... Lovely Chucky t-shirt. I paid £10 for 15 horror shirts, I believe. Uh, all in size medium. They're all listed if you want to go check them out. Uh, they've all been listed for £9.99. I took an offer on this one for £8.99. So if you see one, do send an offer for £8.99. I'll happily accept it for you. But yeah, Chucky, size medium, £8.99. And they play, uh, paid £3.50 postage on that one i can probably just about get away with a postable letter with hermes on that one uh this one here was a little bit more expensive this one has gone for 13 and this is a 176 scale uh scania or scania i don't know how to pronounce the name of that uh high line rugby super league huddersfield giants eddie stobart lorry i guess <laughs> and that one has sold for 13 pounds uh, which is a little bit better than the last one. The other one was, what, £9 or something? Right, next up we have Just Dance. The original on the Wii, and that has gone for £4. Uh, yes, and this one sold for £13 as well, so happy with that one. I did take an offer again, I think I had it up for 14 or 15 or something. Uh, but I don't mind taking offers. This is the thing about my store. A lot of it is, uh, you know, bought at such a cheap cho uh, cheap chops, cheap cost that when someone sends an offer, usually if it's a reasonable offer, I can accept it because I'm still within my uh, profit range or very good profit range uh, to be able to do that, uh, which is really nice because it gives me the freedom to send offers more freely than some people. Uh, that have you know tighter margins um, and uh, I'm happy to do that because it helps shift stuff and when you shift stuff other stuff sells as well because it gets promoted more uh, or at least that's the theory anyway so yes I'm going to move this lot over to the other room I'm going to have to set up the light in the other room and then uh, I'll see you over there 
And once we're over there, we will uh, get these packed up and then we'll be on our merry way to the drop off shop to drop these off and to pick up our stuff. So I'll see you over there. All right, so all of the stuff has now been moved over to this room, which is where we do our packing, our labels and our photographs. Uh, so we're going to actually uh, do some packing on these. I'm not going to show all of it. One thing I will show is how I pack the glasses, because I think that's quite interesting for people to see how I do that. And so far, fingers crossed, none that I've shipped in this method have actually arrived damaged. So, yeah, but... You may be witnessing another Dyson <laughs> on the desk here, and you would be correct. If you haven't seen my last video where I fixed two Dysons I managed to pick up for 99 pence, you may be wondering how on earth have you managed to get another one, and how much did you pay for this one? So this is a more modern compared to the other two that I had. This is a DC24 model with the ball on there, and... Uh, yeah, the handle like goes up and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I actually won this on auction again on eBay for a whopping 99p again. <laughs> uh, so this was listed as, fu as fully working, but the brush was not spinning. He said to me it wasn't picking up very well. So I took the brush apart and cleaned it, put it back together and it stopped working. And I thought, fantastic, I can have a look at that. So I picked it up, and uh, yeah, the guy had done exactly what he said he had done. He had fixed or cleaned the uh, the brush. But one thing with these Dysons is there's this little button here which like locks in the brush. So obviously, uh, when you take this apart, you click that button and it releases or allows you to release I think the brush I think that's how it works but what happened was he forgot to press the button back in to lock it back into place or whatever he had done with the brush I don't know exactly what he did with the brush he said he cleaned it said he fixed it what he actually did was unrelease it so when he turned on the vacuum it didn't work so yeah this has uh, had a full clean I've cleaned it up and everything and uh, I clicked that button and yes, now it fully works, fully spins, all the vacuums working. The uh, the filters I have washed out, they're currently drying. So once they're dry, they'll be put back in and uh, I'll get this photographed and listed. So this version here goes for around 60, 70 pounds in this condition on eBay. Um, and it's actually very small and very light. I would say this is probably, I don't know, maybe around the four or five kilo mark. It's not heavy at all compared to the other versions uh, which I showed before because those are more like eight nine kilos um, so it's about half the weight so yeah I can find a nice little box for that and uh, that one can ship with Herms Hermes Herms whatever you call it everyone calls it a different pronunciation but yeah I'm happy that I found another one um, so yeah we're gonna set the camera up here so that I can film me packing these glasses so here we go so I'm gonna put you here hopefully we can get a nice angle there we go and uh, yeah let's get started shall we so obviously with these glasses you want to make sure that they have a void fill if you're ever selling anything glass or brittle that has a void like the inside of a glass you always want to make sure that you can stuff it with something um, you can either use bubble wrap. I like to use just a void fill paper. But I always do with these glasses because you'll find that most breakable stuff. So no matter how good you pack these glasses, if you don't void fill, there's still a chance that it's going to shatter. Because glass mainly shatters with vibrations rather than actual impact so even if you padded the outside of this there's a chance that a vibration would get through and then it would rattle around the glass um and it would crack it if you watch those videos of them people that sing uh to a glass and then it shatters that's the exact same thing vibrations if they had void fill inside that glass they were singing at it would never shatter because the vibrations would be dispersed by what you've put inside so yeah good tip always to void fill anything breakable 
that you pack. The next task is to wrap in bubble wrap. So I'm gonna get two sheets of bubble wrap real quick. Okay, so I have two sheets now of bubble wrap and I'm just gonna roll these in the bubble wrap. So let me just make sure you can see what I'm doing here. We have stuff in the way. Can you see that? Right, so simply I just roll down one length like that and then I'll get my tape gun wherever that is. My route that around there, fold in the ends, makes a nice little bubble on the on the end of the glass. Like that. So I'll do that for both of these glasses. So grab my this here, this here box uh, folds up to to a box this size. So I take one of these and I actually rip it into four pieces. So you get two bits like this and two bits like this. And what I do is I lay the big bit on the table. I put the glass in the middle like this. And I fold these up like that, okay? And then I take the smaller bit. I go like this, wrap it around like that, so it's double walled, and then I get my tape gun, and I secure it like that. So now there's two layers of cardboard around that, so you've got two layers of cardboard, you've got the bubble wrap and the void fill, so that is not going anywhere, it's not moving in there, it's not doing nothing, so... So I'll just take these two together, just rudimentarily, so they don't like knock into each other inside the package. So that's nice and firm. And then, so we got this big box and we've got our glasses. So now, fill in the bottom, glasses in. And that is that. And uh, yeah, I have 15 other parcels to get on with here. So I guess I could do a time lapse of me packing these, which would be quite interesting. So uh, I guess I'll set you up here.
right so we have now finished packing it took me well by the looks of the camera under half an hour to pack all of that so that's not too bad uh, oh i forgot to pack it pack the jacket i'll have to do that real quick uh but yeah all the other ones are now done so i'm just going to do labels and uh once i've done that i'll have everything packed up and in the trolley and uh, we'll be off to uh go drop these off and collect our parcel so i will see you guys in just a second all right guys we are back i have finished doing the labels for all of my parcels and we are on the way to the drop-off shop so people ask quite a lot actually you know if you don't drive how do you manage to take your parcels well they go in the same <laughs> they end up in the same trolley that i use for car boot sales so they go in there and i walk to the local hermes drop-off point which is a lot easier for me than uh, taking them to royal mail which is why i made the switch so not only do I get the tracking number included, I can do it from Packlink on eBay and it's nice and easy to drop them off. So I just load up the trolley and I walk there. It only takes about four, five minutes maximum and it's a nice, you know, it's a nice little trip out of the house, especially during, you know, lockdown and whatnot. The only problem is I tend to forget my mask. There is a chopper over above. <laughs> I guess we have five star reputation or whatever it's called from GTA. They think I'm stealing the trolley. They're coming for me. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, we have a parcel to pick up as well. So once we get there, I might strap you to the chest and take you in with me. I'm not sure. Depends how busy it is in there, I guess. Um, drop these off and uh, get the parcel, get home, unwrap it, see if it's see if it's in one piece i guess it's from vintage so it could be in a million pieces for all i know so yeah anyway i'll uh i'll see you guys later bye two little ones to go in here our parcel um, make sure there's no addresses on here so bear with me there's a few reasons why I bought this I can make money on it obviously I'm gonna double up my money at least but I wanted to see how someone on Vinted would pack electronics because I've bought clothing from there before and it always comes in a plastic bag not not a poly mailer like a thin bin bag that always ends up getting ripped and trashed. So I wanted to see whether they were able to pack an Xbox any better, but it doesn't look like it. So uh, there's my answer. I've actually bought another Xbox for £10, which is on its way. Um, so that'll be another video. So I might merge these two videos together, talking about whether it's worth, you know, buying electronics from Vinted. Is it, is it a good idea? Well, it doesn't sound like it has any sort of padding in there at all it's a very loose so um this xbox might be trashed um which wouldn't just suck for me it would suck for the person that sold it because at the end of the day they lose out as well so and she was probably selling it on behalf of the child so actually okay i could be wrong here 
I might be eating my words. I might be eating my words here. Because there is another box in here. Okay. So let's get this out. So this is the Xbox by the looks of it. Here are the games. These are all... Uh, as far as I'm aware, these are all um, Kinect games. So we've got a brand new Sonic game, which is brand new and sealed. So that might sell on its own. Don't know if it's worth anything, uh, but the rest are just, you know, normal open Kinect adventures, uh, Kinect moves, Kinect joyride, sports. And uh, there is an Iron Man there as well. So we have some bundle games there. We have... The Kinect itself, which looks like it's in good condition, and the controller, will it power on? No. Do they have batteries in it? Yes. That's concerning. Batteries in the bin. Let's have a look here. Batteries in. Perfect. Take the batteries back out before I forget. Right, let's put this down here because we don't need that anymore. So, they could have done with a little bit more padding in that box just to stop it from, from this box from spinning around in there, but. It's gonna be interesting to see what's in here because I believe. This box is probably a bit bigger than the Xbox. Maybe I'm wrong. How am I supposed to get in this box? Right, let's see. There's the power cable. Oh, there's an extra back for the uh, controller, that's nice. And the Xbox itself. Okay. So verdict on the packaging, not perfect, but better than expected. So, question is, is it gonna be dead? Will she turn on? There we go. Let me just make sure these games are in there first before I get too ahead of myself. I'm um, connecting walls, adventures. Right, is it going to be an extra game? Oh, there is. We have Forza Horizon for free. <laughs> oh, yeah, bonus game. Okay, so let's work this out properly, shall we? 60 for the Xbox with one controller and a couple of bundle games I'll put with it. 20 for the Kinect, so that's 80. 15 for the, for the hard drive, uh, so 95. 10 for this, 105. Um, these are going with the Kinect. That's £105 plus whatever the Iron Man and the Sonic bring uh, and the Forza because they'll be sold separately. So we're looking at maybe £110 back on £35. So that's what, 60, um, about 60, 70 pounds, something like that, uh, before fees, tax, and all of that lot. So I'm happy with that. Uh, and it was actually surprisingly packed pretty well um, compared to what I was expecting. So yeah the xbox itself is in pretty good condition there obviously is a few little scratches on there which were disclosed when i purchased it so yeah it's in pretty good nick to be fair uh it didn't come up red ring which i'm very happy with so there we go that was my first experience buying electronics on Vinted. Like I said, I have another console, the slim version. This is like the updated Xbox 360, and then they brought out that slim version. Uh, I bought one of them. Thank you for watching today's long experimental, I guess, day in the life video. I don't really like the word in a day in the life. It sounds a bit nerdy, right? 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what it is, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.